WCBI News at 10 starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Riley Livingston. Slow moving storms this afternoon left some people in Octobaha County underwater. Around 2 p.m., Octobaha County Fire Coordinator Kirk Rosenhan says he got a call about flooding at Old Highway 25 and Poor House Road. The call then expanded to three different locations. When emergency officials arrived on scene, several people were trapped inside their homes. The District 5 Fire and Rescue brought ropes to the scene to help guide residents out of their house, houses. Rather, um, Residents say the water rose quickly and within 10 minutes was in homes. They tell WCBI they, lo they lost everything, including some vehicles, and some were even shocked by the, their electrical devices that were plugged into walls. Trying to pull out cords so we won't get electrocuted from the floor, and the water mm -hmm. end up getting electrocuted. Everything. Everything. Uh, the refrigerator and the freezer was floating in the water. And my dresser drawer, my little cabinet that I keep my clothes in, it was flipped upside down in the water. The Octobal County Sheriff's Department, EMA Director, and District 5 Fire and Rescue responded to the scene. It's now time to turn things over to meteorologist Kendall Smith for a first look at our forecast. Kendall, will be will we be seeing more rain? Hey Riley, well it was a soggy Saturday area wide. This picture was sent in to us by Jilly Schilling of uh, her grain gauge in Starkville where she saw upwards of four inches of rain at her house today. And that's what we saw across the area. But the good news is on Doppler radar, currently we are dry. All that shower and thunderstorm activity has since pushed out of our area, leaving us with a mostly clear night in store. So this is taking a live look in downtown Tupelo on our Elf Insurance Sky Camera. Our temperatures are currently sitting at 76 degrees and the dew point sitting at 73. So it is a little muggy out there if you do happen to be out and about. And that's what we're seeing area wide. That rain did help to cool off our temperatures quite a bit to the low to mid 70s. 74 here in Columbus, 72 a little cooler in Amory, and 75 in West Point. And as we go into the afternoon hour or evening hours, temperatures will drop down into the low 70s with mostly cloudy skies. Thanks, Kendall. An officer involved shooting in Alabama leads to the discovery of a body. Things unfolded around 11 o'clock Friday. After pol the Aliceville police rather were notified that a car was stolen, police spotted and tried to stop the car. That's when the suspect led them on a chase. Police Chief Tony Jones says one of his officers did discharge their firearm. However, neither the suspect or officer were shot during the incident. One investigator, uh, once investigators were on scene, they discovered at least one body inside of the stolen vehicle. At this time, Chief Jones says they don't know how long the body was in the car and can't release how it's connected to the incident. One person has been arrested, but charges are still pending. That investigation involved three different locations, all within a few hundred yards of each other. One, one location was by a restaurant, the other by the Napa Auto Parts store, and the third near Spiller Furniture. We spoke to a few people who say they've lived in Aliceville all their lives and have never seen or heard of anything like this happening in their community. I saw the police chasing down the road, and I said, man, what's going on? Cause something like this happened. Had to be, everybody in Aliceville know everybody. This little town here, something happened like that, that shocked anybody. That's kind of scary. But it was shocking. It could happen anywhere. That uh, we all in small towns never, you know, always expect the unexpected because you never know. We'll have more details on the investigation as they become available. A Massachusetts man will be sentenced this fall after pleading guilty to a federal sex crime. 34-year-old Michael Petrucci of Dedham, Massachusetts, admitted in Greenville Federal Court Thursday he talked to a Lowndes County child to send him. He talked to Lowndes County child into sending him partially or totally nude photographs. Prosecutors say the child, who was under 15, was contacted through social media. Petrucci is currently an inmate at a Massachusetts prison on sex-related crimes in that state. U.S. Foods in Birmingham, Alabama is recalling around 712 pounds of raw pork and beef products due to possible product contamination. The items recalled were shipped to restaurants in Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, and Tennessee and have the establishment number 21103 inside the USDA mark of inspection. The USDA and Food Safety and Inspection says an employee at the facility may have cut himself during production. FSIS is concerned that some products may be in refrigerators or freezers and is encouraging restaurants to throw the product out or return it. 
The 155th Armored Brigade has returned from deployment to several locations in the Middle East, and today they attended an event to help transition them from warrior to civilian to citizen soldier. Rather, WCBI's Chad Groening has the story. The 155th Armored Brigade Combat Team, headquartered in Tupelo, returned earlier this year from a nine-month deployment to the Middle East in support of Operation Spartan Shield. And Saturday, returning soldiers descended on the Bancorp South Arena for a Yellow Ribbon Reintegration Program, a Department of Defense effort to promote the well-being of National Guard and Reserve Service members, their families, and communities by connecting them with local resources before, during, and after deployments. Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Journey is commander of the 1st Squadron of the 98th Cavalry Regiment headquartered in Amory. He is proud of how his unit performed their mission. I'm very proud to be a part of this organization. Not only this organization, but this organization has made a lot of history. So being here, being able to thank the families, being able to thank the soldiers uh, for their service and what they've done is huge and very important to me as a commander. Sergeant First Class James Hall is with the headquarters and headquarters detachment of the 2nd of the 114th Field Artillery Regiment in Starkville. He says these events are invaluable for a returning soldier. My first two deployments, I came home to these yellow ribbons and I listened somewhat and I didn't listen to everything and I tried to zone out. But uh, this yellow ribbon, I've, I've learned a lot. There's a lot more that I'm taking home that I wish I had learned during my first deployment or after my first deployment. So uh, my life could be completely different now had I listened as I should have. Specialist Brianna Irby serves with Hall. She is impressed with all the resources on hand. I really didn't know which direction to go. Uh, and it's nice that a lot of people are there to, you know, answer my questions, especially about school. I was really anxious to get back in school. We have those resources av available today. And besides educational opportunities, soldiers attended a job fair with representatives eager to utilize their job skills, including the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Well, with the FBI, um, we look for a lot of the same values that the military instills. You know, um, communication, collaboration, teamwork, um, dedication, that kind of thing. So we always um, look to our our military partners for some of the best recruits for our positions, not only for special agent, for other positions as well, and we also give veterans preference. This is one of seven such events being held across the state as the 155 returns from its deployment. Even though the 155 is headquartered in Tupelo, it has members from every county in the state. Dr. David Anderson is a motivational speaker and counselor who is on hand to give the troops encouragement. A lot of it is just coaching folks up, both soldiers and their family and loved ones, of how to navigate the deployment cycle and to where the deployment is not uh, like just a downer, but could be a, a time of real uh, where they flourish. Chad Groening, WCBI News, Tupelo. Approximately 1,100 service members and their families took part in today's event. The start of school is quickly approaching, and to help get parents and students ready for the new year, Life Church held a school supply giveaway. Welcome back. It's tax-free weekend in the state of Alabama, and local stores are seeing a boom in business. WCBI's Tyler Hole went to Vernon and has that story. Local business owners are reminding people to shop small during tax-free weekend. Sam Durham, owner of Durham's Pharmacy, is grateful that people did not leave town and shop somewhere else. We need local people to shop here. I mean, all merchants do, and it's really nice for people who support our business and get out and come out on tax-free weekend. Other businesses are seeing the impact of the locals shopping close to home. Gigi Suddeth, a cashier at that little store somewhere, says they could see the impact right away. Well, today, this morning, it was been very, very good, and uh, we appreciate everybody shopping local here at that little store somewhere. Um, but it's been very good. Suddeth also says the store has many items that are tax free. What is good about tax free here at that little store somewhere is not only the clothes, it's everything. The metal, if you need a flower, just everything on the side is tax free. Durham says that they have a surplus of items that are tax free as well. We have backpacks, clothing, uh, clothing for kids as well as for adults and uh, several other things that we could use for tax-free weekend. Mississippians will be able to join in on the benefits and savings next weekend. Tyler Hall, WCBI News. Tax-free savings in Alabama are available through Sunday at midnight. 
The start of school is quickly approaching, and to help get parents and students ready for the new year, Life Church held a school supply giveaway. The line was out the door at Suddeth Elementary with families hoping to get a bag full of goodies. Pencils and paper, notebooks and folders were just some of the supplies kids received. The team at Life Church started filling the bags earlier this week. Raymond Forbes says they put on the event to help students reach their full potential. It's, it's, it's awesome for me. Love always gives, and that's one of the principles that Jesus taught. And so it's huge just being able to give back um, to the community um, to help our students as well as our parents because ultimately we want to ensure that every child has everything that they need um, so that they can reach their fullest potential. Supplies were first come, first serve, and by 1030, everything was picked up. Today marks the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. The historic achievement was a pivotal moment in U.S. history and defined the dreams of the generations to come. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. It's a moment that still holds incredible power all these decades later. Everyone who watched live in 1969 remembers exactly where they were when they saw it. I never forget the the moments of Apollo because I think they were bigger and perhaps so far ahead of their time that they they stick in your mind. It's a feeling shared not just by Americans but also by the hundreds of millions who tuned in to watch it live around the world. And for those who were kids at the time, it changed what they dreamed was even possible. Took off my gloves, they were floating here in front of me. That was the moment I was fulfill, uh, fulfilling my dream. This weekend marks the achievements of 50 ago, one can't help but wonder what kind of achievements will be talked about 50 years from now. It's a prospect that's already inspiring a new generation. I was just looking up to all the astronauts, just thinking I could be an astronaut one day. But even still, NASA's lunar landing remains timeless. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. In Cape Canaveral, Florida, I'm Omar Jimenez. Well, scattered storms will continue into our Sunday, but a cold front will come in during the beginning of this week, dropping our temperatures below average. More on those details coming up next. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Parker McGill for service forecast with meteorologist Kendall Smith. A soggy Saturday, or Saturday all across the area. This picture was sent in to us by Bertha Fonseca of a storm near West Point. These clouds are called Indolatus Asperatus clouds. Now, after that rain moved out of our area, it left behind a pretty beautiful sunset. This picture was sent in to us by Cassie Cawthon of the sunset in Louisville this evening. Now, if you ever get any neat pictures like this, make sure to send them in to us at WCBI Weather on all social media platforms. We would love to see them. Now, area-wide temperatures are a little cooler, sitting in the mid-70s currently. 74 in Columbus, 72 a little cooler in Amory, and 76 is our warm spot in Tupelo. Now, as we go throughout the overnight hours, temperatures will drop down into the low 70s, with mostly cloudy skies expected. However, we can't rule out the chance to see an isolated shower or two, but for the most part, we look to be dry and winds will be calm out of the south around five miles an hour. So this is our current setup on Doppler radar. All of that shower and thunderstorm activity we saw this afternoon and evening has since lifted out of our area, leaving us with mostly cloudy skies. And that's what we're going to see as we head into the overnight hours as well. So partly cloudy skies out there currently. The clouds do start to increase as stopping us around midnight. We're seeing mostly cloudy skies out there. And then as we head into the morning hours, we could see a few isolated showers and thunderstorms starting to pop up as you begin your Sunday morning. So check out our temperature trend over the next several days. We are in the 80s. We have not seen temperatures in the 80s for a very long time. An average for this time of year in July is in the low 90s, so it's going to be a pleasant change of pace from the hot weather we have seen over the past several weeks. Now, we do have some more rain to talk about, however. Sunday morning, we look to see showers and thunderstorms out there. Those showers and thunderstorms will stick with us all throughout the day for your Sunday, as well as by the time we head into your Monday. We're still looking to see widespread showers out there. That's going to clear out just a little bit, but we could see more showers move in by the evening and overnight hours for your Monday. Right ahead as we move into your Tuesday, as the cold front starts to push in. But as this cold front makes its way into our area, it is going to help drop our temperatures. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. We get some rain, but we also get cooler temperatures. Hey, that's 
this time of year with our weather pattern. Temperatures area wide tomorrow will top out in the mid 80s, looking to be a little warmer for our southern counties, looking at the upper 80s and much of the same expected for West Alabama, mid to upper 80s. So we just have to get these through these next several days of some rain. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday looks to be soggy, but check out by the middle of the week, we start to dry things back out and check out those temperatures. They will be in the mid to upper 80s and lows will be in the mid to upper 60s. Another Mississippi State Bulldog gets an opportunity to make a name for himself in the pros. Courtney has the details next in sports. Your WCBI Sports with Courtney Robb. Speechless. It was the only word tweeted by former Mississippi State outfielder Elijah McNamee after not coming off the board in the 2019 MLB draft. It's how most fans felt, too. How could Big Hit Matt not be going pro? Well, the wait is finally over for the return of the Mac. Elijah McNamee announcing on Twitter that he is headed north. The former Bulldog lands a spot with the Evansville Otters in the Frontier League. He wrote in his Twitter post that he is beyond blessed for the opportunity. Mississippi State legend and Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott returned to Starkville today to host his third annual youth football camp. The camp gives boys and girls the chance to get hands-on training from the Bulldog Great, as well as coaching from many other football minds. Participants receive a camp t-shirt, a souvenir autograph, and a team photo with Dak. Dak feels it's only right that he comes back to share the love that the community has given him. It's the three places that are near and dear to my heart made me who I am. Um, it made me the man I am, the football player that I am. So to be able to go back and, and interact and, uh, and just to hopefully inspire some of these kids, uh, give these kids hope, give these kids belief and faith that uh, they could easily be me one day. Um, and, and just uh, I'm a testament of that as a kid, small town kid that worked his tail off uh, and is, is in this position. That, and I just want to make sure each and every one of them know that, that they can do that as well or they can be whatever they want to be. Sunday is the last day of the Dak Prescott football camp. Well, the saying goes that history repeats itself. The Chicago Cubs taking that saying to heart at the historic Wrigley Field, looking to repeat Friday night's 6-5 to victory over the Padres. The Cubs starting the game off strong. They go up and take an early lead in the first. Anthony Rizzo with an RBI grounder that goes right out to short. Allows Javi Baez to score the first run of the afternoon. The Cubs go up 1-0. Next at the plate, Robel Garcia cranks one out. An RBI triple into center field makes it a two-zip game for Chicago. And then the top of the third inning, the Padres flip the switch. Fernando Tatis with a solo home run into center field. Man, did that thing absolutely fly. Manny Machado then shows him up, juices a two-run jack into right center. His 200th career homer. The Padres take the lead at Wrigley 3-2. to two. Javi Baez back up, knows he's not letting this one get away. Completely launches a three-run home run to go up 6-4. to four. And I said history repeats itself. Chicago gets the win 6-5 to five, and the Cubs will look for the sweep on Sunday. One final Alabama Week stop on the high school football tour. We check in with the Gordo Green Wave when we come back. Stay with us. We wrap up Alabama Week with our preview of the Gordo Green Wave. Head coach Ryan Lally doesn't lose much from last year's team as the Wave looked to make some noise in 2019. Gordo is stop number 27 on the high school football tour. WCBI's 60 Schools in 60 Days is brought to you by Sparklight. One word to describe the Gordo Green Wave, experienced. Coming off a 10-win year, Gordo enters the 2019 season, returning the team's core. Got, you know, we've got a lot of older guys, a veteran team that's done a great job of leading us, and uh, they know what it's like because they've been here a while, so they, they do a good job with the young guys. we we got a lot of veterans that's back, you know, a lot of guys that know what to do, so give our team a lot of confidence. Confident try to be a extension of the coaching staff as much as possible, and we just try to uh, lead by example, and we just tell them to follow our ropes because um, we were on the classroom at once, and that's how we better ourselves by 
following the others. The Green Wave bring back 10 starters on defense, led by a tough group of linebackers. We should be pretty tough defensively, and then uh, you know, our linebackers, you know, we feel like we got a good group of linebackers, but in, in the back end and our D-line, all of them, you know, contributed a lot last year, and uh, they'll, they'll do a good job. What we expect, we're just going to be uh, fast to the ball, we're going to be uh, vicious, and uh, we're just going to give it all we got. Offense isn't lacking either for Gordo. Nine starters return on that side of the ball, including sophomore quarterback Tyler Bailey. He's our quarterback. He shows off great leadership. You know, he uh, keeps us calm in tough moments, and he just keeps everything going. He's an upcoming sophomore, and he already plays like a senior. He's, he's, he's progressed really well. He, uh, he's growing really fast, really fast to be at the young age. Uh, he's really smart, re really smart. and. We're just glad to have him. Leadership keeps the Green Wave grounded as they enter the new season. We play hard teams uh, week in and week out, but we know that uh, we're in competition with ourselves, and as long as we beat ourselves that week, then we're going to be all right. Reporting in Gordo, Alabama, on the high school football tour, Chris Bolton, WCBI Sports. 60 Schools in 60 Days with Gordo High School was brought to you by Shop and Save, Vernon Dental Clinic, Alpha Agent Alicia Clark, and H&R AgriPower. We are almost to the halfway point in our high school football tour. Take a look at the upcoming stops. The Aberdeen Bulldogs will be on Sunday, followed by the Choctaw County Chargers on Monday. The Hatley Tigers will be featured coming up on Tuesday. And then the Houston Hilltoppers will be your team to watch on Wednesday. And, of course, if you miss any, you can always go watch them on our website at WCBI.com. That's it for sports. We'll have more for you after the break. Stay with us. Well, we're going to have another soggy day in store for us for your Sunday as well as your Monday and Tuesday. But the good news is by the middle of the week, we're going to have spectacular July weather in store for us. Check out those temperatures. They will be in the mid to upper 80s, and those are going to be in the low to mid 60s. We have not Ooh. seen those numbers in a long time. That's exciting. I'm excited for some nice sun and no rain. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, we hope everyone has a great night, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. tomorrow.